Hey guys, I'm Matt Asplund and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video, what we're going to be going over is how to optimise your navigation meshes in your game by using navigation invokers. So this is incredibly useful if you have a large open world map. You might notice that if you have your nav mesh bounds too large, it can start lagging your game. So this is a great way to keep it nice and optimised. So as you can see on screen now, when you press P in your level, you can see a green area in which the AI can move. Now, as you can see, this is in a certain radius around the player. And if I were to move the player, you can see that is going to move with it. So the green area that the AI can actually walk in is moving. So if the player was here, only this AI can move, but these two can't. If the, if the player was over here, those two could move, now just this one. And if I keep moving again, just this one can now move. So this is incredibly useful and also incredibly easy and very easy to, to customize as well. Let me just delete this and show you it working in game. But you can increase the size in which the play, AI can move around the player. You can decrease it. You can change how long it's going to take for the tiles to despawn. So you can see this one is moving, but the one on the left now isn't. If I had to keep going, this one on the right won't move, but the one in the middle now is. You can see that one has now stopped. That one's still moving. If I go all the way over to the left, this one is now moving but the other two over there aren't. And you also don't have to have it attached to the player. You can have this attached to anything you want, so a specific AI, just different points within your level, or again, the character, which I think is the best way to do it. But this is what I'm going to be going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code, and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to change some of our project settings. So we're going to go to Edit in the top left, then go down to Project Settings, and then we're going to scroll down on the left here until we find navigation mesh under engine. Then in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for runtime. And what we want to do is we want to change the runtime generation from static to dynamic. So this will obviously mean if you hover over it, you can see this now is fully dynamic and it supports geometry, geometry changes along with navigation modifiers. So we can now obviously dynamically update our navigation in runtime. Then we're also going to search for invoker. And what we want to do is we want to tick generate navigation only around navigation invokers. We'll tick that like so. And that is all we need to do in the project settings. Next, we're going to want to open up our blueprint in which we want the navigation invoker to be on. And again, this can be anything. This can be anything, but it does need to be a blueprint. So this could be a specific AI. This could be your player character. This could be just anything that you want so you can place it within the level in a set location, for example, a building or anything. But again, I think the player is the best, so that's what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna open up our character, which for me is content, third person, blueprints, BP, third person character. And all we need to do in here is add a component and add a navigation invoker like so. Compile it, and that is all we need to do. Now, obviously you can customize this as well, but the only things you need to change are the are under navigation on the right here, tile generation radius and tile removal radius. So as it sounds, these are obviously the radius around the navigation invoker in which the tiles will be added and removed. So in the overview at the beginning of the video, I had my tile generation as 1000 and my tile removal as 2000. Now that's pretty small. I've just got it like that just for the purpose of this video so I can have it in a small map showcasing what's happening but you might want to have it as the default values, but you might want to have it as bigger. It's really completely up to you, and you might just need to mess about with it to get the perfect values for you. But essentially, this is in units. So a thousand units around the player, the tile will spawn in. Once that tile then reaches 2,000 units around the player, it will be despawned. So you can have these as the same value as well if you want, but it's nice to just have a little tail behind the player for the AI to be moving in. It just keeps it looking a bit nicer, I think. But again, obviously, customize it however you want. And that is all we need to do. We'll compile and save this, and we'll close it. I'll show you the code for my AI that I've got. Incredibly simple. All I'm doing is just a random roam. Now, one thing you may want to do is you may want to just have a slight delay of when the AI starts to move, purely just because the AI might spawn in before the navigation loads. So what I've done is on fail of my random roam, I've got a short delay to then do random roam again, but you can obviously have a delay before it starts. Anything you like, you might not have that issue, but if your AI isn't moving when you think it should, that might be why, because it might be trying to move before the navigation invoker has loaded, which means it failed. 
back in our level the final thing we need to do which you may already have is just add a nav mesh bounds so i'm going to go to the add button up here and just search for nav and we want a nav mesh bounds volume i'm going to put that in the center of my level and increase this up so one important thing with the navigation invoker system is you do still need a nav mesh bounds volume within your level it just means that the whole thing won't be active at once so the navigation invokers won't work outside of the nav mesh bounds which is great because that means you can still have set areas in the level where the ai can't go and can't move even if you have a navigation invoker in there but don't think that the navigation invoker replaces the nav mesh bounds it doesn't it just means parts of it are active and parts of it aren't so if we were to hit p now you can see perfect no colors are there it's not red or green because we don't have a navigation invoker in here if i were to drag in my character blueprint or anything with the navigation invoker on it you can see we now have this radius around the player with the green tiles which obviously means that is where the nav mesh bounds is working if i were to move it you can see more are spawning in and then others are despawning like so and i can continue and i can do this wherever i want in the level like this so now if i were to hit play we can test this out and see it working in real time with the ai so you can see this one in front of me in the middle here is moving if i were to walk all the way over to the right the middle one should stop moving and the right one is now moving perfectly like so and if i go all the way back over to the left the right one will stop moving the middle one will start again then the middle one will stop and the left one will start so as you can see this is working perfectly so i think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do what we've done is we've set up a navigation invoker system which means we can just have a much more efficient nav mesh bounds in our level so we don't have to have it the size of the whole map which again is incredibly useful if you have a very large map because that can very quickly and very easily lag out your game so this is a great way to optimize it to make sure that only certain parts of the map are actually able to have ai moving within them and again i think the best way is to have it a certain radius around the player as you can see this is incredibly easy to set up and to customize as well so thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and hope you found it helpful if you did please do make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really does help me and my channel out a lot we're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers so any support subscribing liking sharing really does help me out a lot so thank you so much again for watching and i'll see you all in the next one